recording. How much time do you have? I don't know. Got it all. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. It's Thursday, and it's time for Tuesdays and Thursdays with Care Patrol. As you can see on your screen, you can see a few things. Uh, one is that uh, uh, our topic is senior fraud and abuse. I'm hoping that uh, this is a topic that uh, touches you personally and professionally, like so many of the topics that we have shared with you. Um, so senior fraud and abuse is our topic today on Tuesdays and Thursdays with Care Patrol. This is 1.0 contact hour for social workers, 1.2 for nurses. And I'm happy to say that we have been approved by the Board of Nursing uh, to offer uh, CEU certificates under our own uh, ABN number. So we're very pleased with that. And uh, so, so hopefully if you have nurses who've been hesitant to listen to these calls, who are colleagues of yours, you can let them know that we're now approved not only by the Board of Social Work, but by the Board of Nursing to offer these contact hours. Um, and you can also see those of you that are, are on, uh, on Zoom and looking at a screen, you can see that Care Patrol has changed its look. So we have decided uh, to not, or to try and focus care as what we do and what we offer. Care Patrol has always been a name that's a little confusing, I think, for folks to know quite what we do. Many people think we're a home care agency. Some people think we have a community. Uh, you know, other people think uh, we're a home health agency, or but we're none of those things. We're a referral and placement agency who helps people find all of those resources, including community placement. And that's how we're paid. We're paid if we move a resident into a senior community, that community pays our fee, much like a realtor would pay, be paid if she sold your home. So otherwise, all the driving around and discovery we do and advocacy and education that we do with the seniors, unpaid and uninvoiced. We're paid by the providers. Hi, Alice. Uh, good evening to you or good afternoon or good day, however you prefer to call it. Um, we uh, are t uh, discussing again senior fraud and abuse and Care Patrol's new look. So I hope you like it. Um, it's, uh, it'll be on all of our screens moving forward uh, and on our website and elsewhere. And I hope you're visiting the website. I know I send out an email with with list of upcoming topics and I'll send that out today actually. Um, but I also Hope you'll visit our website and explore what we do and maybe we can help you or someone you know or a client of yours, a patient. So that's uh, our uh, topic, senior fraud and abuse, and we'll get started into some housekeeping. So your phones are muted. I believe you probably know that. If you need to ask a question, please do it in the chat room. And, and I hope you'll use the chat room for other things too, like, um, introducing yourselves to one another, uh, introducing any questions you may have of one another or resources you may have found that you'd like to share with one another. Thank you, Paula. That was nice of you. Uh, it's good to, good to see you here. Um, so uh, I hope you're, uh, you'll use the chat room in a way that is benefiting you uh, and, 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 and makes this a more you know, vital and valuable use of your time. The evaluations are due by new, or excuse me, by five today. They are done using SurveyMonkey. You all who've done this with us before are familiar with SurveyMonkey. 
there's a code word that we'll give later. That also serves as the password to get into the survey. And there's been some confusion about that. So I tried to rename it to make sure that that makes sense to people. But the, the CEU code word is the password for SurveyMonkey. It's also the CEU code word, which lets us know that you listen to the entire presentation. Um, so participants trying to join after 1220 uh, will not be able to do so. So keep that in mind for future uh, use. Or if you drop off, uh, I'll try and let you back in if, if I recognize that you were here before. Um, so we're letting more people in. And thank you all for continuing to show up for these. It means a lot to me that you've stayed with us uh, in the absence of Jay Jones, our dear friend and colleague who started this series for us and is now doing his own series, I believe, coming up in March with Ride at Home. So look for that. Uh, so participants won't be allowed to join after 1220 evaluations are due actually by 5 p.m. today. That's a, that's a, uh, a something I didn't catch y'all. So please do evaluations by 5 p.m. today and ignore this little box that says by noon. Um, paper certificates will be issued to both nurses and social workers uh, via an email document. And I'll also include today's presentation for your use if you wanna get look back over it. Um, so the uh, survey monkey, I want to give that uh, address to those of you who are listening by phone. So if you are listening by phone, I'll give this address to now and again at the end of the presentation. So I'll make sure you get it. But if you're able to make note of it now, the survey monkey link or website is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.surveymonkey.com forward slash lowercase r forward slash all uppercase letters 5H3FMYN. And I'll give it one more time https colon forward slash forward slash www.surveymonkey.com forward slash lowercase r forward slash five uppercase h three uppercase f uppercase m uppercase y uppercase n that's the survey monkey uh, link for today once we complete our presentation we'll invite you to visit that fill out a survey and qualify for your certificate. So let's get started. Um, we're talking about senior fraud and we wanna help you help seniors in your life, whether they're clients, patients, colleagues, family members, neighbors, loved ones. We wanna give you the tools and the information to help them avoid scams, which are on the rise. Why are seniors targets? I think we know this, don't we? It's the fastest growing segment of the population. Uh, in fact, there are 58 million seniors in the US today. There will be 78 million in 2030, okay? Eight years from now, we'll have 20 million more seniors. We'll have 83 million by 2050, 83 million seniors. And the seniors today, the five, 58 million seniors today in the U.S., if they were to link arms and wrap around the world, they would wrap around the world twice. This is how many people we're talking about. And many of them, particularly those that are, are you know, most subject to being scammed are the older population of aged adults, those who would be born uh, in the 30s. So after the great generation and before the boomers came the silent generation. These are folks who are in their 80s now, maybe late 70s. Uh, they're a very trusting people. They grew up in a time when 
Your word was your bond. If you said that you would do something, you did it. Uh, and if you didn't, there was some recourse because after all, you were someone that they could know and see and others would know that they could, you know, have some recourse if you were to fault them. But, but it using, you know, now social media and phones and internet, uh, they're, they're so trusting. They think that everyone that approaches them is on the up and up and they're just simply not. And they're willing to help others. So um, they grew up in a time during the depression era uh, and during World War II. Uh, and maybe saw the boom of the 50s in their teen and 20, you know, teens and 20s. But they were always willing to help others because they grew up in a time of scarcity. But now they're financially stable. They're the most financially stable of any generation in America. And yet they are the ones who, like millennials, are the ones who suggest that they're the most financially wary or or concerned than other groups uh, and they have money uh, there's a lot of zeros but i believe i read that as 24 trillion dollars uh, of money that is held up in the accounts of this generation and there are a lot of generations behind them that want that money so we'll be discussing some of the tactics that they use to do so I love this cartoon and it's so true, uh, really. It's true, mom, your Nigerian prince is really just a crook. Now the difference is today that the Nigerian prince is on the internet. It's not a letter. My mother used to delight in the fact that she wrote the Nigerian prince back and said to him, why are you doing this? This is wrong. You do not have this money. She gave him a piece of her mind, I'm sure is how she put it. Um, and there was really no harm in that. It was probably a P.O. box, who knows? Uh, the difference now is if she were to do that, uh, that person could very easily find out a lot of information about her, including where she lives uh, and possibly even what her assets are, credit score, things of that nature. Um, so the Nigerian prince has morphed from an individual with a phone, with a, with a mailbox to a, a bevy of individuals that are unseen, unheard, unknown. In the cartoon, she says a lot of people fall for scams because they're trusting. And the only reason they want your account info is to steal your money. And what other reason could there be Except again, this is a trusting generation. So if the person said, hey, I need this, I'll pay you back and here's what's going to happen, they might be likely to believe that. And this is exactly what my own mother said to me. I didn't think you were allowed to do that on the internet. So this is a telling cartoon uh, for a lot of folks. Um, it, it turns out, unfortunately, to be true. So let's talk a little bit about elderly financial abuse. So there's a, something called the True Link Report on Financial Abuse. It was done in 2015. And um, I'm sorry, I'm putting a thing on my phone so I can know how long I'm talking to you. Forgive me one minute for doing this. The True Link Report of Elder Financial Abuse, which was done in 2015, so the data is old. It's now seven years old. At that time, they estimated that the loss of money due to scams and abuse, fraud, that was heaped upon seniors totaled $36 billion seven years ago. 16.9 billion, 17 billion was financial exploitation, such as some that we'll discuss. 12.7, 13 really was criminal fraud, which goes back to the, the internet, I think, in many ways. And all, you know, six and a half, a little over a billion dollars were family members who defrauded their loved one. Uh, these are the most, well, they're not, they're not the most concerning. They're just as concerning as the others. 
So, so what are the top 10 scams that equate to this $36 billion loss? We'll go through each of them, but they are government imposter scams, the grandparent scam, that may ring a bell, Medicare health insurance scam, I'm sure you get those calls, computer tech support scam, it's happened to my son, sweet states and lottery scams, this happened to my mother, telemarketing and robocall phone scams, so this happens to each of us every day, romance scams, uh, this might be, you might know the term catfishing, uh, internet and email fraud scams, uh, and then there's elder abuse, which would really just be more familial abuse uh, and charity scams. And then the, we'll even address a few more, but these are the top 10. So let's go through them. Um, the imposter scam is one of the most prevalent government imposter scam. It doesn't always have to be a Washington DC area code, but many times it is, particularly if the caller excuse me, is claiming to be with the IRS. If that's the case or Medicare or some other government entity using the area code, the number pops up as Washington DC, clearly a trusting person is going to likely pick up that phone number and they're going to be asked for their Medicare number to verify information or their social security information. Uh, because benefits may be declined or delayed if they don't give the information. Uh, so that information is then used to commit all sorts of fraud, including identity theft. So that's the government imposter scam, but it extends into local government. You may have a senior be called by a sheriff uh, who's actually not a sheriff. He's a Nigerian prince uh, or, uh, you know, some other local uh, law enforcement or government agency uh, and ask for information. So this is a fairly prevalent scam. Uh, and uh, next is, uh, I think I skipped one. Yes, the grandparent scam. I think we all have heard this, haven't we? Um, it happened to my aunt, which is she received a call. It was late in the evening. It was her grandson who was in jail in South America. And it was all a big mistake, but he needed bail money. And she was just about to send him the bail money when lo and behold, uh, lo and behold he called. Uh, so her grandson, Taylor, actually called as she was getting ready to send her grandson, Taylor, who was in jail in South America, bail money and this is the way that this was discovered but barring that you know with a god thing a luck thing however you wish to address it you know barring that she would have been scammed out of a couple of thousand dollars um and you know it's easy for these folks to do it he, he didn't have to know that her grandson was taylor he only had to say hey this is your grandson and she would then guess and he would say yes taylor now, they might ask for other things. It may be rent. It could be, you know, anything, repairs, uh, buying a house, what have you. But it's, it's a prevalent scam. You may have heard of it. It may have happened to someone in your life as it happened to someone in mine. Uh, and then there's the Medicare insurance scam. I don't know how many times I've told the guy calling that I am not of Medicare age yet. Thank you very much. Please stop calling. But they call anyway. And the thing is, it doesn't matter if I'm a Medicare agent. It really doesn't matter. What he wants is my personal information, again, for identity theft and fraud. Um, this has even been extended to not just phone calls, but people operating temporary clinics in which they capture insurance and other information and payment information and then disappear. So Medicare and insurance scams uh, are gonna be prevalent for as long as there's Medicare and insurance. Um, then there's the technical support scam. This happened to my son. He gets a call, he says, hey, this is Microsoft. There's something wrong with your computer. Let me tunnel in, I can fix it. Oh, and by the way, it's gonna cost $100. Um, and so there you go. And then not only have you given this guy $100, you've given him access to your computer and every piece of data 
in it, including your credit card information, if it's there, including your address, your social security number, other identifying information, if it's there, your medical records, if they're there on your computer. This person can take everything from you and they can even lock you out of your computer. Um, seniors who fell for this lost an estimated $500 each uh, in 2018. Um, and I think, you know, that's probably a low estimate. Uh, and uh, those people are quite fortunate if they lost $500 or less in this scam. There's the lottery scams. So these can be of any type of lottery, whether it's a mega millions, you know, uh, mega ball, or I, I don't know, I don't play uh, lottery, so I don't know the names of them, but, but you know my point. It could be any sort of lottery of, of any type. Uh, and if the person happened to play it somehow, or even if they didn't play it, but they thought they won it, uh, they would you know end up being asked to provide either a down payment on the tax money that would be due, or there are some legal fees that must uh, you know, uh, be paid and they will oftentimes place money, a large sum into an account so that the person believes, okay, well now I've got to pay these taxes or what have you. But then the, the money is withdrawn because the, the check bounces. Uh, so the person has lost their prize money and they've lost, uh, the money they put forward for the prize money. Now, I have a little time, so I'll tell you a personal story. I know this scam well. I received a call in 2018 from a bank in Florence, Alabama, where my mother was living. And he said to me, Mr. Barnes, uh, we have you down as a co-signer on a loan that your mother is taking out for $70,000. Is this you? Well, I proceeded to get in my car immediately and drive to Florence, Alabama, uh, which is about a two and a half hour drive for me, and sit down with this banker. As it so happened, he knew my mother because she had been in many times before to give uh, or to place money orders or to wire money in large sums. Turns out the bank was next door to Merrill Lynch where she had accounts. I then went to Merrill Lynch. It turns out she'd been going to Merrill Lynch for quite a bit of time uh, and getting money out, saying she was getting it for her grandchildren and then getting angry when they asked about it. But they were precluded from letting me know because I was not registered as the power of attorney, nor was I on the account. The bank actually said, as I met with him, that he knew he was sort of breaking the law in calling me, but because she had given him my name, he felt he could do so, and thank goodness he did. I then went to her bank where her accounts were, and she had had the same thing with them, which is giving large sums of money. You can only wire, I think it's $8,000 a day. So she was only wiring $8,000 a day, but she had been doing this for several months by the time I found out about it and was at this point taking out loans, trying to, to pay more money. Now, I found all of this out in a day and I found out what I thought she had lost. It turned out I was about halfway there in terms of the full amount. Uh, and she had won, it turns out, the publisher's clearinghouse. She got in a call from Todd Sloan. Todd Sloan works for publisher's clearinghouse. You can find his photo on their website. He's about my age, probably. Uh, he called her and let her know that she'd won, but she needed to pay the taxes. Uh, and she needed later then to pay uh, some lawyer fees. And she needed later then to give his daughter who was in Harvard in med school to send her some shoes and some pearls. Later, he had a friend, uh, Todd Sloan did, who needed uh, some uh, drones uh, and still another friend in Florida who needed uh, eight 
uh, iPhones without SIM cards. My mother was a spy. At least I think that's what she felt like. She was going out every day and running these errands for this guy for months, for months, um, and wouldn't listen to me. When I found everything out, she was convinced he was real. And then I found, you know, emails and other data, other things that I knew that we had a problem. And this is when it hit me that judgment may be, in many cases, the first thing to go in dementia. And I didn't really understand that. I thought I did. But when you see someone, again, silent generation, always been frugal, grew up with lack, giving away everything she's earned an entire life to a stranger who says he's with Publishers Clearinghouse, uh, it's just crazy. So we had to, I had to, you know, long story short, become her conservator through emergency powers of conservatorship. Uh, take over the accounts, stop the drain on the accounts. Over the course of the next three years, I bought her eight phones. She kept calling him even when he didn't have her number. Um, it kept going. What ended it was finally this. She was starting to get a little frustrated. It had been three years after all, and she still hadn't gotten her money. And she'd done everything he said, but he said, no, no, it's on the way. It's almost here you'll get a little bit of money uh, shortly. And then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll use that to pay the lawyer who's coming into town. He was in town last month, but you missed him coming into town and, and he'll settle this all for you. She told me this. Um, and I said, you know what, mother, I bet you get a check in the mail. I bet you do, but I bet it's written by someone, not Todd Sloan and not publishers clearinghouse, someone else. If you get that check, mother, will you call me? And she did. And I said, you know what, let's go right now and cash this check. Well, she was ahead of me. She had already decided that she was going to do a money order that she could then wire. So she'd already set this up with the bank. We get to the bank. We sit down. The banker says, ma'am, how can I help you, Miss Crocker? That's my mother's name. Uh, and she says, well, I, she didn't really know um, what she wanted. Um, or no, the, the, the banker said, do you want to do a money order? My mother sort of stumbled. And I said, mother, tell them what you want. She said, well, I got this check. I've won the publisher's clearinghouse, you see. Well, at that moment, the banker stood up. The bank manager, I, I swear to, hurdled the counter and was by my side in about 1.2 seconds screaming, no, no, no. She called the police. The police called the FBI. It was finally after three years and virtually everything my mother owned. Finally over, I think. We've had no calls now for going on a year. Um, no money. I got her jewelry out of hock and gave it back to her. Um, she had pawned it. So my point is, I, this can happen to anyone with an aged parent. It happened to me, and I'm supposed to know better. It happened to me, and I didn't even know it for five months. Um, so be careful, be wary, be ever vigilant. Um, but my mother's doing great. She's, she's doing great now. And she's sort of like the mother I wanted her to be uh, when she moved to Birmingham, even though dementia clouds that a little bit. So the robocall scams, you know this, I know this, it's daily. The, the calls I get are from Warrior, um, I think I get them from Argo uh, and then other states. And of course you don't answer them, but it's just a pain. You might be sitting in a class like this and all of a sudden your phone's vibrating in your pocket and you feel like everybody's staring at you. You get these calls all the time. All they really want, and this is the key to the robo calls is for you to answer. You cannot answer. I do because I'm like my mother, stubborn and think I'm going to prove a point. So I answer and push two, do not call again. Of course, this does nothing. Uh, and the do not call list, I, it's a great idea, ineffective uh, uh, completely. Uh, so the robocalls, just don't answer the call. Basically, if you don't answer the call, you're safe. 
if you do answer the call, who knows? Uh, the romance scammers. I said I used the term catfishing earlier. Anyone familiar with that? It's a documentary some years ago where the word comes from, and it's now a TV show based on the same documentary. And essentially, it's someone posing to be someone they're not uh, in a romantic or love relationship with someone. This happens to a lot of women, elderly women who are widowed and lonely, and elderly men for that matter, who are widowed and lonely. It may be that it's a Russian bride for a man, or it may be that it's a guy that lives in Chicago and just can't make it down from work. Uh, whatever it is, uh, if your friend has a special friend they talk with almost daily, you might wanna ask them what they talk about and if that friend's ever asked for money, because they have more than once, and they will again, until they bleed them dry. In 2019 alone, the FTC found that seniors lost nearly $84 million to romance scams. It was the highest loss per capita or per person of all the scams of the top 10 that we've listed. People in that scam lose on average $9,475, which again, I think knowing that scam and having heard about it, uh, I would think uh, that uh, that scam, uh, well, that scam was perpetrated on my mother too, truth be told. So with, with her, not only was Todd Sloan, uh, who worked with Publishers Clearinghouse, asking her to go shopping for him uh, and send money and wire money. He also had her bank account routing number and account number, her credit cards, their expiration dates and the three little digits on the back, uh, her social, everything. He had everything. He used to have pizzas delivered to her house using my name. He used to send photos of her house. This is why I moved her to Birmingham because one of the guys she ended up sending drones to my wife researched, found the address, back researched, found the name. The guy had just gotten out of jail in Florida for kidnapping an elderly woman. So I knew I had to move my mother. The problem was, is that my mother is, I don't know if it's generational or personality, but she always seems to depend on a man to make decisions for her. And for three years, Todd Sloan made those decisions. And I really sort of wondered why, but I found some emails from Todd Sloan and he and my mother, he was gonna give up his job at Publishers Clearinghouse and run away with my mother with the $3.2 million and they were gonna live. And so he had my mother hooked in every which way, like one of those hooks that has hooks, barbs coming off every which way. He had her on a romance scam and a publisher's clearinghouse scam, and she was hooked. Um, these guys are beyond low in terms of character. Uh, and to do this to anyone, but to do it to an elderly person who's you know, already facing loss in life and grief is just un bearable to me. So this is email and internet fraud. And so, you know, so many of our seniors, it's amazing to me that in their 80s are using uh, computers or probably uh, pads more than computers. But nonetheless, they can get email on those and they can visit social media and they can go shopping uh, and they can uh, do whatever they wanted. Um, and now uh, they're getting pop-ups and they don't understand them and they may click on them and open them. Uh, you know, when you do that, what happens? A virus happens. That virus can either steal your information or just wreck your computer or follow your browser. Uh, you know, whatever you might do, steal information in the future. And then there's the phishing scams and the text messages. You may get a, a I get them all the time from Amazon. Oh, your package uh, didn't make it. 
or I got one the other day from PayPal. We've changed uh, this and now you owe money. You know, you just, you just have to ignore these. Someone, Charity Cook, is asking, and I'm sorry to take y'all off on the story of my mother, but I think it's interesting because it shows how close these scams can be to someone, it, very close to me, and possibly, I hope not, but possibly close to some of you. Uh, but it was the person prosecuted, no, Charity, it gets better. Uh, we went initially to the sheriff in Lauderdale County, where Florence is located, who directed us to the city of Florence, to the police, who took a statement and said, you know what, we're not going to catch them. You're never going to see this again. We'll, you know, we're not even really going to do anything because we can't. Uh, it's too bad you didn't catch it sooner is basically what they said. I then went, I have a cousin who works in the attorney general's office in the state of Alabama. And I called her and she said, there's nothing we can do. This is international. The same thing the FBI said when we went to them, the only people who can actually prosecute these people are with Interpol, which is the international police force. And the reason being what we discovered in our research is that these folks Todd Sloan and his cohorts, and there were more than one Todd Sloan, there were about six at one time, but Todd Sloan and his cohorts were most likely what we call you, uh, what we call Yahoo Boys. There's a documentary, look it up, Yahoo Boys, it's fascinating. These are guys, mostly in Nigeria, sometimes in Jamaica, who work in internet cafes, and it's not like Starbucks. It's not what you think. It's not a posh place. It's a, and many times, maybe even a shack that has internet access. And several people will sit in there all day long making robocalls, phishing emails, whatever it may be. I listened to my mother's calls with Todd Sloan. Sometimes they were a machine. My mother couldn't understand that when I told her mother, this is a computer talking to you. But but it was, so it could be anybody. So these guys, these Yahoo boys who live in Nigeria, actually the reason Interpol, as I was told, the reason Interpol doesn't prosecute them is because the economy of Nigeria depends on this. And again, we're talking about $36 billion possibly in fraud. Now, not all of that is Yahoo boys, but, but that's a lot of money. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a big mark, you know? And, and from their perspective, they're living in Nigeria. They know what lack and want is, and the Americans can afford a little bit of hurt. Um, and so you see, it's, it's more complex than simply, oh, this is a bad person. They need to be prosecuted. It actually affects nation states uh, and others. And my mother is just very simply a victim of circumstance, unfortunately. Uh, so let's move on. So phishing and email, these are Yahoo boy activities. Uh, and then here's the one that's uh, sort of most uh, easily spotted, I would say, in, in, in some ways, particularly in a clinical sense. But this is fraud that's carried out by someone you know. It could be the friend. I've encountered many elderly people in my work with Care Patrol who had a friend who bought their groceries and took care of their yard. And had their credit card. These, you cannot oust these people. It is very hard. They are very entrenched and they will claw to keep their way in with the elderly person. And you cannot tell the elderly person that this person who buys their groceries and runs errand and calls on them and checks on them and sees if they're okay is a nefarious person. So many times it's someone they know. Um, I think we said earlier, or we'll say a little bit later who that might be, um, who are the people that carry this out, the, the people we know. Um, but they, they go after assets, income, credit, material objects, whatever it is that they need to satisfy whatever desire they try to satisfy. So warning signs of these friends or family members, grandchildren, uh, is use of drugs or alcohol, high levels of stress on that person, um, lack of social support. So, 
you can see that in some of these folks. I mean, how is it that they turn out to be friends with someone 70 years their senior? They have almost always high emotional or financial dependence on the senior. I encountered this with a, a woman. She had a caregiver who had originally been in with an agency and then had left the agency it was being paid a whopping, you know, double the fee. She was being sent to college by the lady. Her daughter would come there frequently and she called the lady mommy. It took quite a bit for us to get her extricated from this lady. And I don't know what she built her for, but it was a lot. So, and she, you know, didn't lack training in taking care of elders. This would be more of the granddaughter who lashes out or, you know, thinks, well, it's okay just this one time. Um, and it could be that you have someone that's depressed and, and lashing out, a, a husband, a wife, that, uh, or a son that can't take it anymore. Generally, these people are fragile physically uh, or emotionally, not always. Um, so those are the folks that we know. And then we have the charity scams. <clears throat> if you've ever checked a senior's mailbox, they're just full of every charity you can think of, every one. And I'm not saying that any of the charities are bad necessarily. I'm saying they prey upon the elderly in sending out these charity things. Now, you know, a lot of them, even if they're good, you, you can probably see that someone that you know or are aware of who has limited resources in their, you know, 70s or 80s is still sending the whomever St. Jude's $100 a year that they can ill afford because they feel like they should because they're trusting because they're willing to help others and this is in and of itself I think a difficult thing to combat but then when you find that it's someone that doesn't really exist my wife had this experience she spent as a teenager or maybe in her early 20s a week doing a phone bank for a, a charity that was, you know, doing stuff for the sheriffs or the police. I can't remember which. Uh, and then as she finished up the week, took all the money in, the guy skipped town. And she still has remorse about this. She feels like she took these people's money, even though she wasn't aware at the time. So there are these people. It's hard to believe that these people really exist, but they do. And the numbers speak for themselves. Um, and then there's the uh, funeral uh, scams and cemetery scams. Now, this would could be something like buying a plot. You see a lot of these things sold, and, and they're not always on the up and up. It, it is true that you should buy, pre-buy a burial plan if you're trying to qualify for Medicaid in the future. But but just be wary of, of where you go. And I would go to a, a you know, distinguished funeral home, but even then you find the funeral homes will suggest that there are all sorts of fees that you shouldn't have to pay. For example, that you have to pay for a casket, even though you're cremated. So, you know, the, the ability to defraud you lasts even until your death, it seems, sometimes. Um, and really, it's the widowers that, uh, that are most targeted here. You can imagine someone with a plumbing company or or uh, an accounting firm uh, supposedly uh calling up and saying hey you you know i'm so sorry about your your husband or your wife but we had this agreement and i did this work and i need to be paid and you don't know and at that point in in your grief you just yes fine whatever um and and so this is how this get these people get away with this so those are the top 10. We, we want to touch on some others, though. One of the fraudulent aging, fraudulent, excuse me, aging products, um, whether it's fake Botox that someone might get, which can be super duper harmful and even deadly. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's that. My mother, uh, back to my mother, who likes to shop on the internet, but not like she doesn't know how to Google search or, or search in a, you know, for what she wants. She just clicks on the ads on Facebook. Well, you know, everything on Facebook is, is well, not everything, but most things are trash that I've 
ever ordered. Um, and so she orders from them uh, a face cream, uh, which was very expensive. And of course they get your, circ- your credit card number that repeats and repeats and repeats and it's, you can never get rid of it, it seems. So my wife went over to check out my mother's face cream and she's like, Sean, it was Elmer's glue. It smelled like Elmer's glue. It felt like Elmer's glue. It was sticky. Um, goodness knows what she put on her face. Uh, but, you know, those little things add up, especially if they get your credit card and you can't get rid of it. Um, then there's the, the what are called the pigeon or telemarketing uh, phone scams or pigeon drop scams. And, and this is when... Uh, this really goes back to Nigerian prints. You've won a large sum of money, or I've found a large sum of money. I'll split it with you, but I need you to pay to get it out of whatever. Um, and then there would be sometimes a second person involved, like in my mother's scam with the lawyer, a second person involved who corroborates this whole ruse. Um, and, uh, you know, then you're out of money and then they're both gone. About, I like the name of that, the pigeon drop. And if you think about it, what the pigeon drops is sort of what all of this entails, putting people through. So here are the reverse mortgage scams. And it's not, and I don't want to say here that reverse mortgages are scams. They're not. Um, they may not be necessary. In fact, I would advise most people, instead of taking a reverse mortgage, to take out an equity line. There are no uh, you know, uh, parameters or barriers on what you can use the funds for. Uh, you retain your home uh, and the value of your home and you achieve the same thing. But if you do a reverse mortgage, you know, they're backed by Fannie Mae. You have to do a Fannie Mae counseling session. You have to prove that you understand that you know what you're getting into. So there've been some, some things put into place to make that a less uh problematic for folks nonetheless there are people on the sidelines who know that you've gotten a reverse mortgage uh or that are trying to sell your reverse mortgage because they have some scheme by which they plan to bilk other money from you. so reverse mortgages medicare insurance offers you know these can be many times legitimate but in the end very few of them are really in the best interest of the senior they're generally in the best interest of the, of the of this company offering them. And I think that, pardon me if you work for an insurance company, but I think that can be particularly true of some of the Advantage plans, not all, but some. So scammers are taking all sorts of advantage of people by any number of means, skipped one. Um, this is just, uh, in terms of exploitation, this would definitely be someone that had power of attorney or was uh, somehow a relation uh, to the uh, elderly individual, such as continuing to receive checks uh, when someone has deceased or misusing the benefits that someone receives. And, And you find this so many times with people that they don't want for grandma to move to the nursing home because they're living off of grandma's money. Uh, They may even take and buy and sell her social security card or others. They may fail to notify that they've died. Um, They may file claims or loans or other things under that social security number. Uh, And uh, they may misuse grant or contract funds. You see this uh, too. And this is uh, uh, much, much larger dollars, much, many more people affected. Uh, But uh, you know, we've seen the, the misuse of contract funds in an agency here in Birmingham. It was devastating for the people that needed those services. Devastating. And there's no one to pick up the no one to pick up the pieces. So who are these people that are defrauding the elderly? Well, About 7% of the people who were defrauded lost $10,000 or more. So I want to tell you, 7% of 
500 million people, which I think is what we have in the U.S., is about 35, 3.5 million. Now, if each of them lost $10,000, that's 3.5 billion. And that's 7% of those who had a loss, not everyone. So I've mentioned a couple of times that $36 billion is the number that we think elder fraud cost us. But this simple statistic here shows us it's a much bigger number. 35 billion is only that portion of the audience. The average loss for someone was $52,000. So again, that, that and, and this is particular to those that are abused by people they know, okay? This doesn't get back into the scammers. Uh, and you know, almost 2% lost their home. And these again are people they know, 58% of them are family. Spouse, possibly, not likely, could be a spouse, most likely a child, um, could be a grandchild, could be a cousin, a nephew. 17% um, were friends. So these, again, are the people that uh, buy her groceries and have her credit card and drive her car. Um, and then there's what we find, and this has been true in my experience, is that the ma majority of the people committing these frauds, when they're frauds committed person to person, face to face, are unemployed or underemployed men. Now, that may not be surprising to you all. It's a little embarrassing for me to note uh, that that's true, but I do believe it's very plausible that that could be true. Alabama has passed an Elder Care Act. I believe Kay Ivey signed it into law. I say this because I want you, again, to be ever vigilant about reporting and discussing loss uh, of people and, and understanding if someone in your uh, arena or, or sphere is subject to some kind of fraud or scam please report them, okay? Because some people can be caught, particularly these people, these people that commit face-to-face -face felony fraud. Let's be ever vigilant. Uh, and how do we spot it? Well, I think I skipped one. Yep. How do we spot it? Let's take some action steps. So first of all, let's go to this person's house if, they, if we have access and it's someone we know well, and let's shred important documents like old tax filings, old medical records, things of that nature. Tell them, and, and again, trusting generation, but they also know the Better Business Bureau. Tell them, hey, that's so cool that you won that lottery. Have you talked to the Better Business Bureau? I bet they have some ideas for things you can do. Um, and just, you can always say never give your information over the phone, but somehow that doesn't resonate. Uh, and then in terms of charities, make sure they're registered with the attorney general's office. And that's a fairly easy uh, search. More action steps to stop fraud. You might do this. You'd want to do it with permission, but post a no solicitation notice on the senior's door. That could help. Not likely. You could educate the senior about the phishing email. They may forget. It's probably something you should do often. Uh, you could watch for thieves who uh, have befriended someone, the, the people I've discussed to date, someone new in an elder's life that they're excited about, who's younger or from a different background or somehow doesn't fit. Uh, you watch for changes in their lifestyle that this person may bring about or they may become more or less open about their finances. They may be buying things they haven't bought before, spending money in ways they didn't spend before. Uh, and if you can't be there, find someone who can, you know, find someone like a care patrol who can assess the situation and understand, or someone, you know, that a care patrol can appoint, like a home health agency to be eyes and ears, or a geriatric care manager if they can afford it. So there are plenty of ways that we can take action steps to help those seniors in our life avoid fraud and scam. 
So as that is, we come to the end of today's presentation. I appreciate you coming and enjoying it uh, and continuing to enjoy uh, uh, what we do here. Thank you again for joining us throughout this month uh, as we change from Jay Jones to Sean Barnes presenting. I appreciate you all staying with us and I uh, will hope that you would share this with your friends and colleagues, both those you work with and those you know who work elsewhere. Um, you'll receive your certificate of completion either later tonight or tomorrow. Um, please complete all the questions. I know it's a little bit of a hassle, but I would like to know certainly things like, for example, there's a new question this week, which is, uh, would you like us to present to you directly as a team, either by Zoom or in person? And we'd love to do that. Uh, please complete the survey monkey by five today. Remember your email address and remember the CEU code word, which is robocall, R-O-B-O-C-A-L-L, -L, and that's a capital R. It is case sensitive. Capital R, robocall is the CEU code word. And the address, again, for those of you, thank you, Paige, you posted it for everyone in the chat room, those on the phone, the address to Survey Monkey to complete your evaluation and receive your certificate by 5 p.m. is https colon forward slash forward slash www.surveymonkey.com forward slash lowercase r forward slash five uppercase h three uppercase F, uppercase M, uppercase Y, uppercase N. Thank you all for listening. Uh, if anyone has questions for me, I'll look back through the chat room just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, so thank you all again. If you have referrals for us, please do. If you're in Florence, send them to Jennifer Redding. J Redding at carepatrol.com, one D in Redding. Uh, if you're in Huntsville, Dixie Tyler or Decatur, Dixie Tyler, D T Y L E R at carepatrol.com. Tracy Talley is in Huntsville at carepatrol.com. I'm here in Birmingham. We also serve Tuscaloosa, Montgomery, uh, and all points between here and Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, and Georgia. If you know someone in your life, either a client, a patient, someone who comes in your clinic, or someone you know is a friend or loved one, please refer us. We'd love to help them understand what their options are. Their options may be to do nothing, but at least then we'll know that, and we can help them be confident in what decisions they're making about this next stage, perhaps last stage, in their lives. So we appreciate you. I hope we can count on your referrals to continue. You've been so gracious with us to refer us and we appreciate you. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. I uh, am going to uh, pause the presentation or stop it now. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, anyone else, uh, if you have a comment, always email me sbarnes, S-B-A-R-N-E-S at carepatrol.com. Y'all have a great day. And a great weekend. And oh, I'll be sending out our March calendar today when I send you your certificate and also through an automated email program. Thank you so much. Hope you'll see us next Tuesday.